I do think that there are some advantages that could be of reward for students in virtual experiences, namely that there are a lot of individuals who work in specific fields who aren't able to participate in certain courses because of time and geography and space, and I think virtual learning platforms allow for a wider range of voices to be utilized in the classroom and ultimately to expose students to, and perhaps in that sense provide or get education closer to what actually is meant by a global education and maybe combining multiple perspectives that wouldn't normally be able to be combined in person. We have found that in South Africa, uh, particularly for South African students in our universities, the cost factor of study abroad remains uh, the largest prohibitor. We find that even in the reciprocal nature of our exchange agreement uh, and exchange mobilities, where we waive fees, that there's still an imbalance. You know, this is, this is why, and, and with good cause, uh, many even experts and people who have run study abroad programs for a while think and hold the view that study abroad remains the preserve of, of, of the elite. When you think of a virtual experience in the sense of international education, you have to think of it from both a knowledge and an experience component. And so the knowledge side is really on, we can actually put a student sitting in South Africa in a Dutch classroom and give them that same experience in terms of the exposure to a different academic, to a different field of academics while they are sitting at home. But at the same time, we can give them a virtual experience. So imagine being able to sit here where I am sitting now in Pretoria, but virtually being able to walk out in the central station in Amsterdam. You can hear the trams, you can see the sights around you, you can see a thousand bicycles going crazy around you as you enter, and yet you have not left your house. Traditionally, study abroad allows you the actual experiences going there and living in a different country and smelling how things smell in a different place and, you know, walking the streets and the architecture and all of those types of things. But also just the learning environment is different, right? So I became a different type of student. I became a different type of learner through the classroom environment, I guess. From, from being in different universities. And I think that that is still something that students will like, can really, really, really benefit from by like through a virtual experience as opposed to only just like going abroad physically, if that makes sense. So these programs, right, they would be, they would be longer, the engagements uh, would be deeper, they would be much wider as well. Right, that way we're able to reach a lot more destinations for our students. We're able to lead a lot more programs for our students than we would with physical mobility. We also will be able to reach a much greater number of our local students participating in these programs. So students who would otherwise not be able to, to get onto a study abroad program. There's a lot that we have actually learned, but I think virtual experience has helped us to build and enhance mobility. So it's something that we now have to incorporate in our planning. We are actually at the beginning of a new era for international education. International higher education has been profoundly changed this year. And I mean, nothing is going to I mean, be the same again. So basically our task ahead it will be to transform immediate uh, challenges into opportunities and make sure that they actually broaden the scope and re-emphasize the value of what we do in the international education environment.